Good morning, everybody. You are currently listening to A Tall Girls Podcast, hosted by a tall girl named India. I hope everyone who's tuning in today is doing super fantastic. Before I get into this episode, I do want to say, make sure you're following me on my socials at A Tall Girls Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest so that you can stay up to date on all of the latest podcast episodes and catch a glimpse of my everyday life. Also, feel free to leave me a review and let me know how tall you are. I'm genuinely curious. Everything is going to be linked in the description. Today's episode is a Q&A episode slash life updates episode. Over on my Instagram, I asked you guys, what types of episodes do you want to hear? And a Q&A and life updates episode was the most requested. And I was like, wow, when was the last time I even did a Q&A <laughs> and life updates episode? It's probably been a minute. So I figured it's time for... A new one. It's time for an update for you guys. And I want to get straight into the questions because there's a lot to go over. But before I get into that, I just want to talk about Black Friday. It's coming up in what, like two weeks now? That is insane. And of course, I'm looking for the good deals for you guys. I'm looking for the good deals for you girlies. And I want to do it nice and early so I can put you on and you guys can prepare for it. So I want to give a quick shout out to Raf Maternity Clothing. Thank you, Raf, for partnering with me on this episode. If you didn't know, Raf is a tall maternity clothing brand providing stylish and comfortable clothing for the tall mama to bees out there. I actually did an episode with the founder, Kemi Essie who spoke about her journey as a tall woman and finding confidence in her height, as well as her journey as a business owner and a mother. So I definitely recommend checking that episode out to learn more about her and the story behind Raf. Raf currently has two collections out, the Leilani collection and the Kaya collection. All sets are made with lightweight, airy materials and are made to fit our beautiful long limbs. And what's super awesome about this brand is that you don't even need to be pregnant to wear the clothing. So even after your pregnancy is over, you can still wear the clothes you purchased. No need for a baby bump to rock these pieces. They'll be running a Black Friday sale from Friday, November 24th to Sunday, November 26th. Make sure to check out their website at rafofficial.com. This is going to be linked in the description. And thank you again to Raf for partnering with me on this episode. All right, let's get into these questions. Post-grad plans. Ooh, this is, this is an intense one. So if you didn't know, I am currently a senior in college. I'm finishing up my last year of undergraduate school. So I'm graduating next May, which is just a couple months away. I will admit it is a little scary to kind of think about what I'm going to do after I graduate, especially because I have consumed much of my life. So to just not have that aspect be a big part of my life anymore, it's just like, what am I going to do with my time? So I decided to go to graduate school. Fun fact, I am an entrepreneurship major. I used to be an international business major. But I ended up switching my major because the international business major at my school is pretty, pretty intense. Like you had to go through a separate application process just to get into that major, which is kind of weird because I already went through a whole application process just to get into the school. Now I have to go through another application process to get into that major. There was like a whole bunch of essays that I had to write. And then on top of that, the course itself, the major itself is very rigorous and i had to have probably like two or three minors i had to add two more minors with my major and it just it wasn't looking good for me i was like i don't i don't think i could do this for undergrad so i switched to entrepreneurship which is good for me because i guess you could say i'm an entrepreneur i'm a freelancer So I think that fit well in terms of like meeting people and networking with people who are entrepreneurs and just learning things about the whole entrepreneurship field. And so I still want to study international business. So I'm going to go to graduate school for international business. And I will be taking a small break, just a semester, just like three months. Because I know if I take more than that, if I take like a year, I'm there's the likelihood of me going back is very low (laughs) because school has me so burnt out. So I'm going to take a small break, then go to graduate school. And as I said before, I'm a freelancer, so I want to continue with that. I want to do more with that because I'm only doing it part time because of school. But I want to I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'm trying to figure out, do I want to freelance full time? Do I want to freelance part time and get a part time job? Do I 
I don't know. I also want to start my own business at some point. I know it doesn't have to be right away, but am I going to start it right away? I I don't have a clear direction in terms of that. Yeah, I just know that I like what I'm doing for my work and I'm going to continue to do that. So those are the two big things that I'm thinking about graduate school and what direction I want to go with in terms of my work and my freelancing. There is definitely a lot of pressure to have all the answers now, but I keep telling myself that I have enough time. I have more than enough time to figure out my life. I just take it day by day and just see what happens because I don't have to have it all figured out right now. I'm 21, so obviously I don't have to have it all figured out. I'm young and I'm still learning. And even when I'm 40, 50, 60, I'm still going to be learning and I'm still going to make mistakes. I'm still going to be confused about things. So I just try to take it a day at a time. Okay, so this next question actually ties into the first one. What is your dream job? So I'm a freelancer. I am a freelance content marketer, which means that I plan, create, and manage content for other businesses, for small businesses right now, which I assume you probably know would be fitting for me since I have this whole podcast. Like I'm just into content and creating and planning and managing it and stuff like that. So I want to continue to do that for now. Like I said, I don't know if I want to freelance full-time, freelance part-time, part-time job, business owner. I just know that the whole entrepreneurship type of situation is in my path. So I want to continue down that road. In terms of what I actually do, I want to transition into branding, which is essentially marketing on steroids. So it's a little bit of product management along with marketing management. Um... I discovered that, I don't know, probably my sophomore year of college, so about two years ago, but I needed the experience, so I figured that content marketing would be a good way to kind of get my foot into that door, but I eventually want to become a brand manager, and I want to manage brands. I actually did a class <laughs> over the summer. If you didn't remember, I studied abroad in Italy. I took a global brand management class and that kind of solidified the fact that I want to do global brand management. So that's ultimately my dream to get into brand management. What is your go-to snack? This this is a good question because we like talking about food. So I like this licorice. It's called Australian licorice by, I think the company is Daryl Lee or Daryl Leia. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't even know if it's Darrell or Daryl. But it's Australian licorice by Daryl Lay. And they have a whole bunch of flavors like green apple, strawberry, mango. Mango is actually my favorite flavor. But it kind of just disappeared. Like I can't find it anywhere in any of the stores. So I don't know where they went. Maybe they just don't sell it in my area anymore. I don't know. But I absolutely love that snack. And it's crazy because I used to not be a fan of licorice. I actually hated licorice, especially with the whole like Twizzlers thing when Twizzlers were super popular. I I don't understand how people I don't understand how people liked Twizzlers. They just tasted like plastic. They had no taste, no flavor. So when I found this licorice, I was like this. This is some good stuff. So Australian Licorice by Daryl Leia, whatever the last name is. When are we getting skincare? Never. (laughs) I'm not a skincare product type of person. You know, I tried to be at some point. I used to use a lot of products in terms of like the cleanser and the toner and the moisturizer and the serums and all that stuff. Even I even at one point was trying to get into what is it like the 10 step or the 12 step Korean skincare. I was trying my best because my acne was really, really bad when I first started college. Um, But then after a while, it just got too much to keep up with and very expensive as well, because I also use quite a few products for my hair. So hair products and skincare products, along with other things that I needed, it just I didn't know. I couldn't keep up with it and it started getting extremely expensive. So after a while, I stopped. Uh, However, I did start noticing a difference in my skin after a while. A lot of it has to do with age because when your hormones first start like going crazy when you're transitioning from a younger person, a child to an adult, 
your hormones are going to go crazy. So yes, like it's inevitable that you're going to have acne. So a big part was age. And I guess you could say my hormones calmed down. So that I like my acne decreased the older I got because of that. So yes, that played a big part of it. But also I found that because yes, I still have acne to this day. My acne decreased or lessened when a I got more sleep because sleep is very important. <laughs> And with school, like doing the most, like I wasn't getting that much sleep. So sleep definitely helped with that. Drinking a lot more water as cliche as it sounds and drinking a lot of water and getting rid of the toxins in your body so they don't like show up in your skin. That definitely helped a lot. Sleep, water and changing my pillowcases, changing my pillowcases ever so often probably every like three to four days about so twice a week making sure they're getting washed is very key because I do sweat a lot especially now that the heat is coming on now that it's getting colder here I do sweat a lot so it just stays on the pillowcase and that builds up on our face and we don't need that so sleep water and changing your pillowcases so this is your reminder to change your pillowcase if you haven't already what is the next country that you'll explore hmm that's a good one So if you didn't know, I did say earlier in this episode, I did study abroad in Italy over the summer. And on top of that, yes, I went to various places in Italy, different cities, but I also went to France and Switzerland. So that was, that was really nice. I think that reignited my excitement for traveling because when I was younger, I did a lot of traveling, especially when I was like in high school. I've been to a lot of different countries, um, Colombia, I've been to Spain, I've been to the Netherlands, I've been to Egypt, South Africa, I've been to a lot of places. But when the pandemic hit, it kind of stopped. So studying abroad kind of reignited my excitement for travel. And my friends and I are actually trying, keyword trying, (laughs) to plan a graduation trip after we all graduate um, next summer. Well, after most of us graduate next summer. And I really want to try to explore like different islands or kind of like smaller countries, not like the big city type of countries. So we were thinking about Thailand, we were thinking about Bali, maybe that's the next step. But I also want to explore other places in Europe because I think that it, it, a lot of the cities and places in Europe kind of remind me of New York City, not necessarily in terms of diversity, but in terms of Just the city life, the infrastructure and the architecture, sometimes it's even better. So I also want to visit places that have that city type of feel to it, but it's also kind of tiring. Hence why I was like, yeah, like maybe trying a more tropical area, maybe trying a place that's maybe even a little bit more rural, some type of island, stuff like that. So most on my list right now is Thailand, Bali and new places in Europe, essentially. Do you consider yourself tall? Yes. One of the more popular comments that I get about my height is that I'm not that tall, but like I'm still considered tall. It's kind of like if your height doesn't start with a six, you're in some gray area between what's considered tall and average. And it's really weird, but I am above the average height of a woman, which is 5'4". So yes, I consider myself tall. What's your number one goal before the year is over? I have a lot of those. I have a lot of goals. There was a lot of things, a lot of expectations that I had in 2023. There's a lot of things that I wanted to do, a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish in 2023. I've accomplished a lot of them. I've gotten there in some places in 2023, but then there are also things that I haven't reached yet and it's still possible that I could get there and there's other things that I haven't reached yet and it's just not it's not looking good it's not looking like I'm gonna reach them this year but it's okay we can always transfer them to next year um so it kind of like depends on what area you're asking about but since there wasn't a specific area I'm just gonna assume overall so my big thing with 2023 is having a work-life balance because I believe that I spent a lot of my time especially because of college just putting work in, putting so much work in school and and my career and of course this podcast which I love I love uh, well I don't know about school (laughs) but I love like my career and the growth of that and the growth of this podcast but 
I just feel like I was kind of lacking that college experience of having fun and meeting new people and networking and just branching out. So my number one goal was definitely to make make a lot of friends and just have fun and rest and relax. And I will definitely say it wasn't until the later part of this year, probably like September-ish, October-ish, that I actually started getting into that, like setting time aside to rest and relax and setting time aside to hang out with friends and try to put myself out there and meet new people. So that was definitely my number one goal of having a more balanced lifestyle before the year is over. And I think that I'm headed in the right direction for that. How tall are your parents? So my dad is 6'1 and my mom is 5'8. So I'm kind of like stuck in the middle in between them in terms of my height. So I'm 5'10 and a half. So I think it's like a pretty even mix of both of my parents' heights. What about you? How tall are your parents? Are you taller than both of your parents or taller than one of them? Let me know. What's college like for you now? I touched on this a little bit earlier. College is much better than it was in my first two and a half years so if you didn't know i spent my first two years of college completely online i didn't go back in person until my junior year and that first half of the year was a struggle just trying to acclimate myself into a new environment and commuting and making new friends and I was just not having the time of my life. It wasn't until the second half of that year, the second semester, where I actually started making meaningful connections with people and actually enjoying the college experience and getting more involved. So now it's kind of like a continuation of that. I'm doing more because I'm in school more now. So I'm meeting more new people. I'm making more friends. I am participating more in school activities and pursuing my hobbies more in the school setting so I definitely think that it's I'm I'm feeling the college experience I'm experiencing the college experience I guess you could say so it's definitely much better than it was three years ago (laughs) even though I'm having the time of my life in my last year of college better late than never how are you doing that's a heavy one (laughs) um Overall, I'm doing pretty good. Like physically, I'm doing well. Mentally, I'm doing okay. (laughs) Um, I think that I'm doing good for now. Um, There's just a lot of stress in terms of school with trying to like manage my classes, manage being in school more, and trying to manage friendships as well as trying to figure out what I want to do afterwards. I can feel the post-grad anxiety kind of creeping in a little bit. Not not super bad because I feel like I have some type of direction in my life. So at least I'm set there. But in terms of taking actionable steps to get to where I want to be, it's a little bit scary because it's kind of like after I graduate, hmm, where do I go from here? I mean, I know I'm going to grad school, but I'm still taking a small break and I still have to take time to figure out my career. But yeah, I literally just went off on a whole tangent. You just asked me how I was doing. I'm doing good. I'm not doing superb and fantastic, but I'm not doing bad either. I'm I'm vibing. I'm vibing. I'm content as of now. When did you feel most confident about your height? This didn't happen until recently, actually. And I believe that starting this podcast helped with that talking it out, connecting with other tall women, and self-reflection, those things definitely helped me work through my insecurities, and I definitely have this podcast to thank for it. And my ultimate goal with this is to help other tall women work through their insecurities. Any new hobbies? No, not any new hobbies at the moment. Um, If you didn't know, my current hobby is my music. I play the bass clarinet and I started playing for my school's music club earlier this year. So what was it like end of January, February, and definitely the best decision I can make for myself in terms of that. I absolutely, I've been playing the bass clarinet for about five years now, overall playing an instrument in the clarinet family for what, like seven years. So my hobby is definitely my music and I don't have anything new as of now because of school. I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing, like I'm grateful to be getting an education, but it also does take up a lot of my time. So I can't do any other hobbies besides school. 
um, unless you count this podcast as a hobby, maybe creating content and music. I just personally believe that any type of creative outlet would be a hobby for me. So after I graduate from even graduate school, I'll probably pick up a new hobby that is like a creative outlet for me. Maybe like pottery or something like who knows. But yeah, I don't have any new hobbies now. But if I were to pick up a new one, I would definitely pick up something creative. And yeah, I think we're just gonna end off with that. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. And thank you so, so much for submitting a question if you did. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. As always, feel free to hit me up on my socials at a tall girls podcast. And let me know if there are any other questions that you want me to answer. If there's anything else you want to know about me, or if you just want to chit chat about life, it doesn't matter. I'm down for a talk. I'm down for a chit chat or whatever. (laughs) And don't forget to leave me a review and let me know how tall you are. I really want to know about that. And thank you again to Raph for partnering with me on this episode. All of their information is going to be linked in the description as well as mine. And I'll catch you in the next one. Good night and goodbye.